So they tell us that they want us to calculate the value of y. We are told that they, well, they want us to calculate the value of y. Okay. Now they tell us that this part over here plus this part over here is equal to this part over here. Now, don't try to make sense of that. It doesn't make any sense. But what we can do is we can try and, okay, we can try a few things. So I'm going to look at this part over here, just that part over there. And what I'm going to do for that part over there is I'm going to go find term number one, term number two, and term number three. The reason I do that is so that I can work out whether that part there is arithmetic or geometric. Okay, so I'm going to go find term one so long. So term one. To find term one, I, I take this number over... I take this number over here and I plug it into the equation in the place of P. So that's going to be 4Y plus 3 times 1. And so that's just going to be 4Y plus 3. Then I'm going to go find term 2. How do I do that? All I do is I increase this number by 1. So that means I'm going to be plugging in a 2 now. So that's going to be 4y plus 3 times 2. And so that's going to be 4y plus 6. Then I'm going to go find term number 3 by plugging in a 3. And so that's going to be 4y plus 9. All right, guys. So what we now do is we can have a careful look at term number 1, term number 2, and term number 3. Okay, and you need to try and identify what are they doing? Are they adding? Are they minusing? Are they multiplying? What is going on? Well, most of you should be okay with the fact that it looks like they're adding the number three. You see, if you go from 4y plus three, then if you add three, that'll give you 4y plus six. And if you take 4y plus six and you add three, you're just going to end up with 4y plus 9. So what we can then say is that that part over there is arithmetic. Okay, so let's quickly do that. Let's put a box around this one. And then we can say that this part over here is arithmetic. And what's the common difference? The common difference is 3. Excellent. Now, what I'm going to say now um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay with this one over here. Now, did you, you guys obviously know that this, sing, this sigma notation, what does it actually mean? It means the sum of. It means the sum of. Now, there are only going to be five terms in the sequence. How do I know that? Because we are counting from one up to five. So that is five terms. So we might as well go and calculate term four and term five quickly, right? You can put it into the sum formula, but if there's only five terms, I think we can just do it manually. We don't have to go get the formula and all of that stuff. So we can just go get term four quickly. So I'm still busy with this one. So term four would just be like that. And that would give us four Y plus 12. And then term five would just be 4y plus 3 times 5, and that would be 4y plus 15. Excellent. So we have all five terms. And what does sigma notation stand for? It means the sum of. So we can just go add all of those together now. We just add term one, term two, term three, term four, and term five. And so if we were to go and do that, we should end up with 20y plus 45. Let me just double check that. Yeah, you should end up with 20y plus 45. And then if you wanted to do, um, if you wanted to do it with the formula, then you could use the formula. Because it's arithmetic, you would have used sn equals to n over 2, 2a plus n minus 1 times d. And you could have used that formula for this over here as well. You will eventually get to 20y plus 45.
The only reason I did it the manual way is because there were only five terms. But if there were like 45 terms, then obviously we would have used the formula. What I'm now going to do is I'm moving on to this part over here. Okay. And once again, I'm going to go do the first three terms. Why? So that I can see what type of sequence we are busy with. So how do I find term one? I take this number that I see at the bottom and I plug it into the equation. That number doesn't have to be a one, guys. That's not what it means. So I'm just going to plug it in on my calculator as I see it like that. And that gives us 24. Don't actually think this is going to be a very difficult question. I think it's just long, to be honest. It's not difficult. We're literally just plugging in formulas here. Term two, we're just going to increase this number by one. So that would take us to a five. All right, 48. Then I carry on term three. How do I do that? I just increase that number another one. So that's going to be a six this time. And that's going to give us 96. And then I might as well just go one more because that will take us up to the seven over there. That'll take us up to the seven. You see, we counted from the four up to the seven. That's all that sigma notation actually is. And that should give us, I think, 192. Yes, 192. And then I'm just going to go add all of these numbers together. These numbers over here, I'm just going to add them. And that's 360. All right. And now I'm just going to go do the last little part, which is this part over here. So I'm just going to go find the first uh, three terms. I know it's going to be geometric. Why do I know it's going to be geometric? Because they have a little infinity symbol at the top, and you can only use the sum to infinity on a geometric sequence. Exactly, Kanye. Kanye made a good point. They, they catch you by making it look difficult. So guys, my rule for you guys, or not my rule, but my advice is when you see something like this, it looks terrible. I know. But guys, it's I promise you, I've seen so many of these types of things. And what I've learned over the years is just start with the question, plug in the information, do what you can, and it slowly starts to unfold itself. There are some questions that you will get stuck and you'll look at it and you'll be like, okay, now I don't know where to go. But most of the time, you should be able to just start the question. And then you might get stuck somewhere in the middle, but at least then you'll get some of the marks. Okay, so just start the question, let it unfold. And most of the time, it's just going to get to an answer. That's the beauty of math. So it just gets there somehow if you just follow the basic uh, rules. Um, so yeah, it, 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 it's very difficult to go very far off track if you just start the question and you do what yeah, okay. So if we find term one, uh, term one, we're just going to plug in whatever number is at here, here at the bottom. And so that is a one. That's just a coincidence. It doesn't have to be like that. And so I'm just plugging in a one, and that's going to give us a uh, one. Then I'm going to plug in term two. So you must never be put off by what the question looks like. Um, I've seen some really difficult looking questions like this is one of them. And it's actually such a joke. Like this is just a big joke right now. Like we're just filling in stuff. Um, and if we do that, that should give us one over nine. Okay. Now we can't go add all of these together because we would never stop because it's a sum to infinity. So what we're now going to do is we're just going to use the sum to infinity formula. Remember that one? A over one minus R. All right, um, Uzera, let's see what happens. Let's see what happens there. So <clears throat> this answer I just got from the memo, but hey, memos can be wrong as well. So let's see what happens. Um, so we need to get a value of R. Now to get an R value, you're just gonna take term two, term two and divide it by term one, for example. And that's gonna give you a third divided by one, which is just a third. Okay, guys, I'm just switching off my video for a little bit. Um, probably getting in the way right now. So I'm just going to put that off. And so now we can go get the sum to infinity and that's going to be A over one minus R. So A is term one, one minus a third. And this should be, what's that? Three over two. 
one over one minus a third, three over two, or I'm just going to say 1.5, 1.5. And so now we're going to go, uh, now we're literally just going to go plug everything in. So the first part here is 20Y plus 45. So we're going to go 20Y plus 45 um, plus, then the red part, uh, this part here was 360. And then that's equal to the part in that was in green, and that was 1.5. And there we go, guys. Now it's just a matter of solving. Let's clear up a bit of space here for ourselves. And so I'm just going to solve this thing quickly. I'm sure you guys are okay with the next part. If you eventually do go and solve this, you should end up with a final answer where y is equal to negative 20, 175. Now, small little quest, small little thing quickly. Um, some of you might be like, um, Kevin, why aren't we rounding this to 1.8? Guys, you definitely can if you want to. Um, memos are a little bit weird sometimes. What I've noticed is that whenever the answer on the calculator has like three decimal places and it doesn't, and, and, and it comes to a stop, you know, like if it just says 175, then most times on the, the memos, they'll write it like that. Um, but if you guys rounded that to two decimal places, it's fine. They're still going to mark that correct. Okay, so there's a bit of a weird thing happening there that I've seen on memos.